Coming up, how to implement curriculum learning in Unity 3D with Machine Learning Basics. Just wanted to take a second to thank all my Patreon subscribers who are helping me with the production of the show. And if you find the show useful, you can check out our Patreon down below. If you're not able to participate with the Patreon, it's totally okay. A like, a share, or a subscription is a great way to help make sure that this series keeps growing. If you want to get started implementing curriculum learning for your project, the very first place that makes sense to go, it's the first place that I went, was the page that comes on the GitHub training with curriculum learning. Unfortunately, it's kind of brief. And the training environment that they use here I don't think that demo uses curriculum learning in 0.3. I could be wrong, but I didn't see some of the telltale signs of doing curriculum learning there. So wasn't super thrilled with the fact that this documentation is very light, doesn't go into enough depth, especially when it starts talking about reset values and things like that. So had to do a little bit of waiting uh, more than I normally have to do for these videos. Uh, but the good news is I was able to figure it all out. And so here's all the information for you. Okay, so you take your project and it's gonna look a whole lot like your other projects. I'm gonna go ahead and switch over, make sure that my curriculum brain is set to player. As usual, you will want to make sure that you can play your game um, however poorly or well uh, you are able to, in my case, very poorly, um, but that you can play your game and try to actually complete something. Once you have made sure that your game is intact and that it's using all of the proper input and your brain is set to where it needs to be, now you've got to figure out what is it that is going to change and become more difficult over time with relation to the lessons, right? So you start with a very easy level and then you wanna get harder and harder and harder. In my case, what I opted for was the, uh, the range of the target, right? Is that it starts off very generous and that almost anywhere you go, you'll start getting points. And then over time, that gets smaller and smaller and smaller and that makes the project harder. The other thing that I played around with a little bit is the, uh, the reward, or in this case, penalty value, for crashing. So main camera, standard issue. Directional light, standard issue. The Here's the main project. The visualization came from earlier videos. So if you wanna see what's going on with the visualization, you can just download the code or check out uh, some of the earlier videos. Same thing with the game creator. That just duplicates the environment so that it plays 20 games at once. And then the academy is somewhat standard. It has a couple of more changes to it than we're used to. All right, so getting in here, the three inputs curriculum. So I do have a bunch of uh, special classes that were set up for this because I was changing the relationship of where the distance value was coming from. I was changing the, the source of that distance value and the source of that penalty value. So they were no longer uh, a part of the uh, uh, agent all right, so they used to be set here in the agent, and now they're not because they're actually coming from the academy as opposed to the agent. So um, you need to make your changes, right? Get rid of any kind of duplicate fields or whatnot because you're going to be getting the fields from the academy. In this case, I also have, uh, I believe, some hard code on start to actually find the academy. So I know the type of the academy, I know there's only gonna be one, so I do a find object of type at the very beginning of my code in order to get a reference to the academy because the academy is now what has the uh, the, the parameterized values, the uh, reward and the difficulty. Um, and upon agent reset, uh, I don't think we do anything different there. Collect observations is the same. Take an action is the same. Calculate the reward is not. So in here, again, we're using the Academy's distance scale, right? And we are also using, uh, let's see, there's also the uh, crash penalty. So 
There we go. So we'll see it here in collision happen, uh, collision happened academy dot on collision points. So basically, I have a singleton academy, and on startup, I create a reference to that academy, and then I use that academy to look at rewards. Aside from that, the rest of this code is pretty much the same again because I had different classes and I have uh, a, you know just different class names. So I have a bunch of different classes with references. So for example, the floor is in fact uh, identical code. However, I have to reference the three input curriculum agent instead of the three input agent. And so I ended up with a bunch more code files. And again, you can just grab all these on GitHub, but you're not gonna see any giant surprises. So where the heck does the academy get those parameterized values from? I did not know this at first because it mentioned in the documentation, hey, use the reset parameters. It didn't tell you where the reset parameters were or what they were for. Um, and so here they are, they're in the academy. And so there is this reset parameters area and you can add a new one and you can remove the last one. And these are some of the initial values or the, here are the placeholder values for use in Unity. And here's the name, distance scale and on collision points. And again, specific to three input landers, we're gonna go ahead and open this academy. So unlike before where our academies were basically blank, I now actually have some content in my academy file. What I'm doing is I have public floats for distance scale and on collision points, and then at an academy reset. So when the uh, learning system has said, all right, you have uh, successfully achieved your previous level, we want to make it harder for you, we're going to do an academy reset. That is where I actually set this distance scale and on collision points. The reason why I did it this way is so that it kind of encapsulates and hides this reset parameters, uh, which I, I believe is just a list of strings, or it's a, I'm sorry, a dictionary, a string string dictionary, or, or string float dictionary. Um, so I just wanted to uh, obscure this from the rest of the code so that none of the other code has to understand what reset parameters are, that the academy is uh, interfacing with this and then standardizing it into uh, a access mechanism that is going to be uh, more friendly for uh, the rest of my code. So that's kind of the internal interface. Um, and then let's see here. For inside the code, or inside the curriculum, so what you do is when you start a training run, you are going to have a JSON file that has all of your configuration again. So this is what kind of measure is it is a reward. This is one of the parts that the documentation does actually a fairly decent job of explaining. Um, so it talks about you know, reward versus progress, um, the thresholds. So again, the threshold is how many points should I be getting? How many reward points should I be getting in my environment before I move on to the next lesson? Um, so in this case, I've said 20 because again, I, I feel that's a superhuman level for this particular game. It's going to vary greatly depending on your game. So you're gonna to wanna to have a good feeling for what is the range of values for your game. What is the range of scores? Um, and then here's the parameters. Now notice that these match capitalization exactly. I don't know if that is, I'm having 100% confirmed that it's important. I'm pretty sure that it is though. So uh, watch your capitalization for these reset parameters and these guys, because this is being JSON getting parsed into a uh, Unity land, into a Unity array. Um, and so both of those are case sensitive. So I'm pretty sure uh, this is gonna be really important uh, to get the case sensitivity right on that. And then again, this is the distance scale. So what happens is it starts training and when it starts, it uses this value. And then if it learns and gets up to this threshold level, then it will do that reset and uh, pick these two values. So in this case, I'm saying 0.1 and negative 10, our initialization, which you'll notice is quite different from the reset parameters here that I'm using as kind of my defaults for inside Unity. So you start up your training, goes through, parses out this file, grabs these values, 
comes into Unity, goes into this curriculum, and populates these reset parameters. When these reset parameters are populated, it calls this Academy Reset. The Academy Reset executes and changes these public values. These public values are then referenced by the rest of the code. So that's how your data gets from the uh, curriculum JSON file all the way to where it needs to go in your experience, in your environment. I will say, again, one of the values here of having this kind of system is even if you're not that interested in doing curriculum learning, it is a convenient way to start parameterizing some of your uh, application so that in case you're not really sure what reward or penalty values might work better for you, right? You can put them in there in those reset parameters and then you can just do a bunch of really short runs with those in and you can just change them in the JSON and then execute a bunch of times really quick back to back. And it's a great way to just kind of explore that so that you get a feel for the impact of some of your parameter values. So once you have done all that, and I have one of these guys running right now. Um, so I'll show you the command line. So again, learn.py curriculum, uh, that's the name of my Unity project, right? So run ID is curriculum 11, and in this case, oop, dash dash train, right? I'm training it like anything else. And then the curriculum is three input curriculum.json. So I got to pass, pass that JSON file in there and says, hey, here's all the curriculum parameters. And it just kind of goes, really. And it'll even tell you, even if you don't have TensorBoard up, um, it will tell you so long as it's not running here, um, when it changes from one lesson to another. Here we go. So you'll see uh, now in lesson one on collision points is negative 10, distance scale is 0.2. So this is when it had achieved the first lesson and has moved on to the next lesson. And so it'll actually tell you that in TensorBoard. And um, every now and then I've been getting these logging errors and I don't know why I've been getting these logging errors. It's only happened with curriculum learning doesn't seem to cause any issues. It just kind of keeps going. It just sometimes it has a logging error. I don't know why. One more thing that I wanted to go over before I closed out because I thought this was interesting. You can have a curriculum running with your application and you know get to the point where you think that you're happy with it. And if you know what lesson that it's in, you know you can write down those parameters. And you can stop it. From there, you can adjust the parameters in your curriculum and run it again if you feel like there's some tweaks that need to happen or something like that. Or you can also um, change things. So again, everything uses the, the current set of parameters. If you just want to see where you are and just go and do a whole bunch of PPO, you can do that. You can stop it. Control C. Sooner or later, it will listen. There it is, All right? So it, learning has been interrupted. It's gonna generate the graph. And then what you can do is you can start it again without the curriculum file or with a different curriculum file. So the idea here is that you can just kind of pick up where you left off so long as you have this dash dash load command, right? So we weren't able to do that for uh, imitation learning, but we are able to do that with PPO and uh, curriculum learning. So I think that's really interesting. You are gonna wanna be careful though and watch those parameters because in the academy, right, it has these default parameters. And if you don't use a curriculum file, these are the values that it's gonna use. So uh, if you do wanna just kind of pick up and then take something and do a big long batch of PPO once it reaches a certain point in the curriculum, just be sure that you either create a second curriculum file that has the parameters that you want or make sure that your parameters in some way or another are matching up so that you continue to train on what it is that you wanna train on. Um, I wanna know how people do with curriculum learning. I didn't have a huge amount of luck with it, but I think that's largely because the amount of randomness that's in this problem. This is a very difficult problem. And so since it is such a serious challenge, um, it might not necessarily be quite what I was hoping it was going to be in terms of assistance. However, that said, um, the many of the examples that were given were less random examples. 
And um, I'm also curious to just hear from folks, how did it work? You know, did it work for you? Did it work well? Did it work poorly? Um, because it is an interesting technology and an interesting approach to the problem. I just didn't really quite get the kinds of results that they had, you know, posted here in, you know, the documentation, right? Uh, my results were nothing like this. Um, but that doesn't mean that yours might not be. So if you have great luck with it, or if you don't have great luck with it, um, let me know. I'm very curious to see how people do. So thank you very much for watching and happy learning.